Welcome back to episode number two of Mr. Hayden's Ag Lessons. I am Mr. Hayden, and am I excited to see you back. Today, we're gonna to be talking a little about soil. Before I do that, I need to shake things up a little bit. We're gonna be doing this as our experiment later on, and I should have tested this lid before I did this. I spent about five minutes ago drinking the last half of the Snapple, but thank you, Snapple, for your corporate sponsorship. So we'll take a look back at this later. So like I said, today we're going to be talking about soil, which I know for a lot of you brings up some really dark times in your life as a small child when you ate soil and then uh, turned out just to be a gateway to uh, harder things like dog food and then eventually packaging peanuts. But hey, you survived. You're here to tell about it. And uh, who cares if you bark a little bit? All right. So we're going to talk about soil today. One of the things we're going to go way back in time, Iowa, 10,000 years ago, covered by glaciers, extremely cold. What was growing? Nothing was growing. But what do we have today? We have some of the deepest, darkest topsoil in the whole world, partly due to thousands of years of native grasses growing and, and decaying over time. And so today we're going to talk about three main soil particles, sand, silt, and clay. But as those glaciers receded, like we talked about, they left some rocks that broke down over time. Maybe one of the most important things that we have that helps develop our soil is we have the weathering of soil particles mainly caused by lichen, which are tiny little green grayish specks on the side of rock. And when they break down rocks over thousands of years, they help form soil. Most people would argue that soil is probably the second most thing that is important to all plants. It provides the nutrients and the structure for the root system. We got an early septic tank call here today, but that just reminds me to remind you of our corporate sponsors, Cleaver Concrete. This basement was made by them and it's very nice. Call them today. And so when we're talking about glaciers, uh, when, they, when they eventually melted and the weathering of the soil with the lichen, those rocks, they broke down into smaller and smaller particles, eventually it formed what we know as soil. Now, like I said, we are very fortunate in Iowa to have some of the best soil in the world. You can go in your backyard, find some topsoil that looks like this dark topsoil right here, but in other parts of the, of the world, it might be rocky, it might not be very fertile at all. But the components of soil that we're gonna talk about today we're going to talk about sand, we're going to talk about silt, clay, and organic matter. I know that last one is kind of a big word, but you guys can handle it. Just practice it over and over, okay? So first off, sand, we all remember in our play, in our sandbox at home growing up as a kid, we had a lot of sand, the feeling of it, very coarse. When I, when I pour water over it, it drains easily. Sand is the largest particle. Notice the difference in size. These are not drawn to scale, more just for... Uh, I guess you could say visual aids, I guess we'll say. And then from for, with sand, we see a lot of drainage. Those of you that like to garden, you'll know that a lot of garden crops prefer a little bit sandy soils to help with that drainage. A plant's root system does not like to be saturated with water all year during the growing season. It'll stunt the growth of the plant. So soil, enough sand is important to allow for drainage of water through, but also we need sand to help uh, keep, uh, especially with our root crops in our vegetable gardens, makes it much more easy to clean off, like potatoes and things of that nature. But then when we think about the other things that influence the soil and how it was formed, we have important things like the amount of time that that soil has been around, the parent material of the, form of the soil, and also the slope and topography of the soil allows us to learn a lot about how it's formed and why it's formed the way it is. So those of you who like to go fishing, shout out to the Independence Bass Club. If you guys like to go on the Wapsie River, you might see a little cloudy water in there. Well, partly due to some silt particles that got in the soil. How'd they get there? Well, that's for you to find out, right? So part of the reason that in Iowa, as we farm, we need to do a really good job of conserving the soil. And when we leave the soil bare, when it rains and we have a uh, spring snow melt, part of those silt particles, they travel uh, along with the water that runs off the fields and potentially into our rivers and tributaries. And as those uh, rivers and tributaries, they team up in the, the Mississippi, you, you see a lot of silt particles. And as they hit the Gulf of Mexico, they end up creating the Mississippi Delta. Not something that we want to see. Our best resource in Iowa wash down our river system. But silt is one of the most helpful particles because it allows for soil fertility. Nutrients are not held very tightly, but they also aren't washed out of the soil. So a soil that's high in silt is a good combination. And then lastly, you might notice I have the word clay there. Not like clay aching, which a lot of you don't even know what that is, but clay kind of flattens out like a soil particle. And what it does is I would give the example of keys or, or coins overlapping. And you guys have taken art before and made something out of clay. You know that when you dry clay, 
it is not very porous. It pretty much seals up all micro and macro pores in that soil. So in early civilization, like we talked about yesterday, we talked about the importance of crops and they might store them in some type of clay pottery or things like that. But if I'm in farming and conventional setting, or if I am trying to raise a garden, I do not like a lot of clay because it's going to cause water to pond on my soil. It's not going to let very much air into the soil. And those are things that are important for plant roots and for plant growth. Now, I know this is a pretty deep subject and it's kind of like it's dark but and scary. And I, I'm still in my basement, but uh, trust me, there's a lot of light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, soil is extremely important in our life. Um, let's test our uh, sample bottle and see how it's doing. So it, it doesn't look like it's changed at all, which is kind of disappointing. But um, what I did is I shook up this bottle. It had some sand, silt, and it had some clay in here. Uh, this clay is not pure clay. Uh, I dug it out of my backyard, similar to like yesterday. Uh, but I shook it up, and over time, you can't really see it very well right now, but over time, this bottle, this water, it should become much more clear right here. And as these clay particles in suspension, they should settle out. As you can see, the first particle to settle was our, our sand. And I did dump a lot of sand in there, so that might have mess things up a little bit and floating on the top we haven't talked about our last not a soil particle but extremely important for plant health okay organic matter dead decaying plant and animal material i know it's not fun to think about when you've had a pet die but if you buried it in your backyard it's helping you grow the grass that you like to mow every every day or every year okay and so this is corn stalks and leaves uh decomposers in the soil one other thing that i forgot is just in one handful of soil like this there's over 100 million individual bacteria, fungi, and different organisms, okay? Now, when we talk about fungi, you might think about Mr. Hayden mainly, but the fungi in the soil, it helps break down uh, the, the material that's there, and then it allows those nutrients to be reabsorbed by plants. So that was a quick rundown of our soil, and one of the other things that kind of influences, or you can tell how much sand, silt, or clay, is a thing called soil texture, the combination of these three soil particles. And my example over here is, I have my clay right here. I can make it into a ball like this. It feels kind of sticky a little bit. It is still damp. If I wet it down some more, it could probably stick into a ball and then stick to my thumb. That's kind of a medium textured soil. If I grab some sand, obviously very coarse, it just falls apart completely. And then silt kind of has, if I dried it down, has a little bit of a flowery feel to it. Now, one interesting thing, this is a pro tip for all you new teachers, especially in ag, is if you do soil texturing with your students, make sure you do a clay ball like this and you wet it down and you form it looking like this and you let it dry out and you set this on your desk the rest of the year and kids will not try to be around your desk that much, okay? It hardens out every once in a while. I hold it just to kind of really scare the kids, let them know who's boss. So um, just keep that as a souvenir. Maybe later I'll auction that off, okay? Um, but that kind of covers our basics about uh, soil texture and also the components of soil. We did not talk about how those factors influence um, the different horizons of soil, and we didn't talk about soil uh, profile or any of that. So one thing that I'm noticing with these episodes is if I cover too broad of a topic, I'm just going to run out of stuff to say, which is hard to believe, I know. But um, with that, I'm going to uh, kind of close down this lesson today about soil. I appreciate, your, uh, I appreciate you guys watching, I think as of this uh, episode today, about 650 views, which Kind of tells me uh, a lot of you have never been quarantined before, and it shows because uh, there's a lot better content out there. So once again, thank you for signing in to Mr. Hayden's Ag Lessons, and we'll see you tomorrow.